Hello friends, hope you are doing well and welcome back to my channel NovaTech Videos. And this is the series of Windows Server 2022 and in today's demonstration we will discuss about the DSCP failover. So let's understand the lab environment for this. So I have one server and this is DC2. Let's log on to the server. And currently this is the server which is providing the assigning the IP addresses to the client machine and this is one of my client machine. As we see in the IP config result and currently this is the IP address DSCP IP address 10.98.132.9 which is assigned and this is the IP address of this server so let me show you the IP address as well cmd IP config ok so this is the IP address currently and this is the DSCP server IP I have another server and this is DC1 and I want to configure this server as a failover for DSCP so if in case this DC2 DSCP server goes down by any region so DC1 can continue assign the IP address to the client machine. Let's log on to the server as well. Password. Okay, so I am going to remove this. Uh, this is TC2 only. I have just added for management. As you can see, DC2. Okay, so we will remove from console. That's fine. Okay. So only the DSCP role is installed on the server, and this is the primary D, uh, DSCP server. So before we create the failover uh, for the DSCP, we will make sure six four seven that is the port number that must be open from the firewall and we must be the DSCP administrator and both the servers the DC2 in my case and DC1 must be assigned with the static IP address so these are already configured and the static IP is assigned on both DS DC2 and DC1 server and now we are good to configure the failover so before we do let me add one more scope scope name is science dpt department no description as such i will use standard 98.1.32.9 dot 10 and the range and 131 dot 20 oh, that's fine I want to just give the end IP range to 20 only so 10 IP addresses and previously one more one more DSCP score what we have that is 132 The address range and mask conflict with an existing scope. Okay. I change it to 97. Let's try. Okay. I change the mask, mask here. 16. That's fine. Okay. There is no exclusion here. I'm going to pick okay lead duration that is eight days default that's fine i want to configure this is scope now 
okay and i'll give the gateway 10.98.1.4 so this is the gateway this is fine pre-run domain win server activate and finish let's add another scope uh, in ipv4 new scope new and give it a name like the error That's fine. Give next and start IP range that is 192.168.1.10 and 10. Dot, sorry, 192.168.1.20. So I'm just giving only two and the range is fine. Okay, exclusion that's fine configure it now the gateway that is 192.168.1.1 this is the gateway and this okay these are the dns and activate now and finish so we have added successfully one more scope and just for demonstration so currently we have two scope and now we will configure the failover to configure the failover uh, we will click on ipv4 or we can do it for a specific scope as well configure failover but we are doing this for entire server so all the scope failover is replicated to another server or configure failover so i have only two scopes i'm selecting all but if i want to pick any one of these that is also fine so i have two i'm selecting all next and we have to give the partner server name in my case this is tc1 add server from browsers dc1 let's browse it okay so this is going to be the partner server and click next okay dscp server service is not running on a specified server so let's go to this and validate okay so i had disabled it let's restart automatic start and start okay so service is started now let's go back to the server click on next the following scope already exists on this server the scope will need to be deleted on the partner server before configuring it let's go to this server so previously i installed this as a scope but it was not working so i'm gonna delete it this is not in use that's fine so there is no scope let's validate now at server dc2 sorry dc1 dc1 next okay so all the errors are gone and the relationship is this one dc2 and dc1 and the maximum client lead time is one hour so i'll give it uh, just to test 15 minutes but you can so it means if the dc2 is down by any region then dc2 one start assigning the ip addresses to the client machine so 15 hours i'll select zero and i'm just giving only 15 minutes 
so you can you can decide the maximum client lead time as per your business requirement and mode we have two mode load bill balance and uh, hot standby so i'm just going to configure this whole failover as load balance and the load balance percentage local server is 50 and another server or the partner server is again 50. so state switch over interval i am leaving it as is message authentication okay let's leave it as is and the secret key i'm going to use next and next so the configuration is successful let's close the wizard and refresh and let's go to our dc1 i'll refresh it the server itself and expand you can see both the scopes are created here So the failover configuration that is done now and let's validate whether it's working or not so for testing this we'll log on to the client machine and determine the ip address or the dscp server ip config slash all and this is the current dscp server so just to test it whether the failover is working or not what we will do we will go to the dc2 uh, this is 9 ip address is 9 for this so i am going to disable the dscp server service on this uh, let's go to open the services And we can disable it from here either we can do it from here also stop okay so this is no longer the DSCP server and the IP address should be assigned by DC1 domain controller on that server let's go back and then release okay and then i'm going to renew okay so let's check out the ip config and then slash all and here we go if we look at the dscp server that is 10 in our, in our case now so here let's validate the ip which is assigned from this lead is this one client one so it means it is working fine also you can see the symbol that is arrow so it means the dscp failover that is working as expected so that's how we can configure the DSCP failover. So that's it in this video. And uh, let's catch up in the next video. Thanks for watching.